Empire versus London Conspiracy. <laughs> Bye. Slack. Slack. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Slex, I didn't mean it. I lied. Come back. I'm coming back. <laughs> Buddy. Yeah, yeah. Begin the analysis. <laughs> okay, begin the analysis. So far, no thing, nothing of uh, notable difference from previous series or from all the series in the history of Dota 2 in this patch. Uh, it is a Lone Druid band and an OD band. Whoop de doo. <laughs> Good lord, Cheever. Wow. Whoop de doo indeed, Lone Druid. Such a strong carry these days. The yeah. bear combo. The OD. Bear. Where's he from? Do you know OD's lore, by the way? I don't. Is he not from. Um, oh, he's not. No. The outhouse decorator? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's from an out of world. He he's an up. outworld devourer. True, true. Well, no, he here? devours outworlds. So no. he is from this? Okay, tell us. No. Sorry, I know you know Loris. You see, OD is from the edge of the universe, where there is a some kind of horrible thing coming to the planet that Dota has held on. He doesn't ever say it, but he predicts it. Here's a cool fact, though. Did you know that Ten it looks like remaining. he is being affected by some kind of rock virus? He has the same body as uh, Enchantress and Radiant as Lashrak. But he's covered in rocks, and in one of his death lines says, The stone has reached my heart, killing me. So maybe what he's talking about is some kind of strange space rock disease. That's the lore. I don't know conspiracy? why. Conspiracy? And, and I want to point out that it's actually the lore. This is a true story. That's the lore. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, neither do I. Ask Valve, because that's <laughs> the lore. There you go. <laughs> So I do like it that you know all the lores. It's kind I of, do know all the lores. It's yeah. kind of you scary. You know so. all the lores? That's me. I memorized them name all. A, name a hero. Earth spirit. Earth spirit. Or Earth spirit is a spirit that wanted to come back. He wanted to come back in the form of something respectable, and he found an old general that had a bunch of stone soldiers. He takes over the stone soldiers. That's why when he summons them, little stone guys come up. Wow. It's just like the thing in China. That's, That's it. Amazing. That's Ten the lore. Seconds. Doesn't Three make minutes. much sense, but what are you going to do? I do like uh, the one with the Magnus and the Alchemist because they're intertwined, right? Remaining. Well, it's all it's all between the lines, Shiver. We don't really know, but that's my theory. That's the theories coming along here. Radiant Not only do I know the lores, but I make up a lot of Agnum Scepter upgrades that nice. I think would be great. No, let's not talk about those. Come on. Come on. Let me yeah, tell you about a few. one. Give okay, me a few. check out the oh. newest one. We made yeah. this the other day. This is Lycan's Ags. Yeah. I participated in this, by right, the way. Right? This is called the Pack. It's a new ability. Lycan can A-click any one of his allies, and he bites them. Oh. When the night comes, they turn into Lycan oh. wolves. Oh. They can't control themselves for the entire night. Lycan has to get his whole team. But Five the more so he, creatures you just, in the pack... So the one guy he plays all the heroes? He can bite all four heroes. The more heroes that turn into Lycans... The more and upgrades the buff is he gets. Stacking, so the more you have, right. the higher buff the, the pack so gets. So your team sucks. You just go around, you bite all of them. They don't get to play <laughs> but anymore. But you have to be and in the vicinity of each other as well to get the buff. That's right. It's not global. That's right. So, so you it's go, just as micro. A pack, you run around. Five lichens coming at you in the night, Pie Cat. What do you do, dude? I run. Nothing. You can't I run. No, you can't run for the wolves. You the wolves are way faster. The wolf. I play Zeus <laughs> and then I ult because. What was that again? <laughs> <laughs> no, leader of the you, pack, you pack also gives you more health. That's the you pack. You can't run from heaven. The there you go. Oh. oh. Okay. Well, we finally have something to talk about. We don't have much to talk about with a uh, invoker or yeah. spirit or enchantress, but we do with faceless void. How do you feel about faceless void this patch? You like him? Yeah, I think he's nice. He's also good against invoker. Dude has a lot of spells, time dilation. You know, mm -hmm. Ten seconds loses his. Remaining. I don't abilities. like that spell can't, at all. Can't, can't, can't cast no <laughs> it's more. too strong. No more oil. Time dilation no. is too strong? It's, in pubs, it's just the, the death of me. Why? What's so wrong with it? Because she relaxes using spells. Uh, yes. Yeah. And she can't use no spells. <laughs> can't use no spells. <laughs> it's rough, really. Like, any idiot with a basis void can win a game because he press, can press buttons. And it feels like it's just, you know. Yeah. I would think his new jump mm. would be the reason you dislike him. Because that's why I, I'm I dislike okay him. I'm okay with his new jump. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I like that. That's, that's the reason why he's strong. I don't think that the time dilation should be needed for him to be strong. So what would yeah. you do instead of time dilation? Five seconds. Uh, I like the backtrack. The backtrack. So you just want to bring uh, old boy back. No, but like uh, instead of time dilation, I wouldn't mind seeing slower cooldowns. But not that they stop altogether. They can be slow. 
Slow. Slower right. cooldowns. Okay. So you just want to nerf Void. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you don't just you just don't like Void. I just don't like time Is it something personal? Like I I actually did lose a game. Do you do you not like people Void. without faces? I had a winning streak <laughs> of seven games or something on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then comes a faceless void and just wins. Team Empire. Well that's Even certainly he, he certainly online. needs a nerf. Yes. If yes. he was able to <clears throat> defeat Shiver, <laughs> hey, then by God, we've got to nerf this. I hero. won seven games in a row and then just <laughs> Valve was like, What? Are you put a faceless void are you again? Yeah. Oh, yeah, enemy team, actually. Okay. All right, so no broodmother again. You want to talk about again. the draft, or? Yeah, yeah, we're there. Right. No broodmother again. No lion again. No beastmaster yep, again. Yep. No what do you want to talk about, buddy? Why is Jericho just banned out? You think? Just asking, oh. you know, if you have any predictions, <laughs> any heroes you'd oh, like me? to see in this game. Oh, I already know exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah. Disruptor. Yeah, Team Empire is gonna be picking up Disruptor. Wow. To we deal with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Woo. To deal with that. Oh, thank you very Pretty much. Impressive. Uh, we will not be seeing a keeper of the light this game, even though he would be great. Um, mm -hmm. No keeper. Any other bold predictions you'd like to make? <laughs> uh, although he's a very strong hero, we won't be seeing any Omni Knight, unfortunately. Right, we'll which seeing... heroes will we not see as well? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, dude. You guys have input on what we might see. I have on what we're not going to see. They're both okay. light and dark, yin and yang. They're both yeah, needed. I get it. Bye, Cat. What are we going to be Five seeing on London Conspiracy? Remaining. How do you deal with this much magical burst? Well, Juggernaut is funnier <laughs> that comes to mind. To right. The spin, you know? Yeah, yeah. He can uh, use that, you know? Then you can't use any spells on him. Hey, look, there it's fuzzy, and it's again. Ursa. Oh, yeah, Team Ursa from Team Empire. Okay, I was now, just about to say serious that. Serious question, though. That was an extremely fast pickup of Ursa from Team yeah. Empire. Why was that? It seems like they knew exactly what they wanted to do. It's just a good hero in general against Juggernaut. I mean, Ooh. the Fury Swipes still work against... Even if he's spinning, and then also you can use ult. When Juggernaut uses ult on you, okay. then you can press your own ult, then you, I mean, you take pretty much no damage. Yeah, 80% reduction. And, uh, yeah, so... And Ursa is also good against Void. Like, Void is an offlaner, he can't do much against Ursa, and Ursa alone can zone the faceless Void, so mm -hmm. it frees up the supports of Team Empire. So, uh, it's just a Radiant overall good hero against what London Conspiracy have right now, I'd say. By the way, uh, Empire is playing with a stand-in. Oh, they yeah. have a Stallioner as a, a stand in for Ramses. Oh, oh wow. Oh, that that might be a big blow. Oh, boy. I don't know. Uh, was he playing in the previous series? Uh, no, also Stallioner was standing in. Okay. It's a stand in, though. I, I think it's just because Five Ramses seconds. might have Easter things to do. Yeah, we might have lost his keyboard or someone might have lost it. For yeah, him. <laughs> he's, he's on the hunt still. <laughs> <laughs> he, got a, he got a line about the keyboard. I got to go, guys. My precious, we have sent. My precious, my precious keyboard. <laughs> I thought his impression was better than yours. I actually bought that keyboard on eBay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's great. Did you feel like you got any, you know, to get better? No. The game? No. No. <laughs> I think I got worse. Unfortunate. <laughs> All right. So last prediction here. Uh, what would equal it out? I feel like they got a lot of burst. All around. They got some physical burst. They got some magical burst. How about somebody just nice and normal, non-bursty? What are you thinking? Team Empire? Tide yeah. Hunter. Tide Hunter. I was thinking, yeah, well, how about a tank? And I, just, yeah. I, think it I was Ursa. actually about to say, <laughs> oh, the, my tank, God. the tank. See? The Team tank. Empire, they got it. Wouldn't you think Ursa is slightly a tank, though? That was my but reason that was for maybe not saying it. That was right? In the first game, they only had one Ursa, and he was not enough. It's true. You need more tank. You need more tank. And so they pick up you yeah, know, well, the good old watermelon. I like it. It's nice. We haven't been seeing a lot of Tide Hunters lately, so no. I'm pretty excited no. to see this, actually. If During the Major, there was a lot of Tide. Yeah. Quite a few, yeah. yeah. But in this Remain. tournament, I mean, I, have we it's seen also one really yet? good, I think, against um, both Five Juggernaut and Void. Remaining. I mean, he's good in the lane to some extent against Juggernaut. Obviously, the spin is kind of annoying for Tide because he can't crack him out of that, but mm -hmm. it makes it hard for the Juggernaut to farm. And also against Void in general, the idea of Void is that you have the team fight control, but against Tide, you kind of don't. Oh. Tide's ults bigger. I think you're gonna favor Empire more. Yep. Goodbye, London Conspiracy. <laughs> Win Ranger last pick. Yeah. Insta loss. What are you thinking, boss? I think that if the Earth Spirit can and the, the, the Maiden can win the mid lane for the Windrunner, mm -hmm. then they could be having somewhat of a chance. But I just think the team fights will be really difficult for for London Conspiracy once yeah. again. I, mm -hmm. I feel like. In all three of these games so far, they kind of are lacking on the team fight. They don't actually have the team fight, so <laughs> taking these head-on engagements is still difficult for them. Yeah. So 
I mean, we'll see. I think now they have they have Ursa on Dire as well, right? Yes. So and they can protect that really easily to, with the Tide Hunter and Invoker as well with Forge Fridge. You summon a Forge, maybe bring in an Enchanter's Creep. Yeah. And then you have a Tide Hunter there protecting the Roche. So all Roche should be going to um, Empire. And so I think it's gonna be kind of hard for London Conspiracy to fight that. Yeah. But they're gonna have to do really well in the laning phase and then kind of snowball off of that. It's okay, at what minute do you feel like <laughs> if London Conspiracy is behind at that minute, they lost? Um, like, what do we look out for like in terms 15? of timing? 15, they cannot be behind at 15 minutes? I think if they're behind at 15 minutes, then yeah, it's gonna be very hard for them to actually win the game. Okay, what do you look forward to seeing most? What do you, what do you want people to look out for, for happening? Uh, let's see. They're gonna have a pretty good time up until the six minute mark. Wind Ranger will look like she's gonna do really good. Then we're gonna get into mid game. She's going to start to fall off, and okay. then the game will be over. Just like every well. Wind Ranger game ever. Okay. <laughs> that was uh, the last positive thoughts <laughs> coming from uh, Sir Action Slack. Just not a fan of Wind Ranger. I personally like Wind Ranger. I like what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do about it? Stop hey, the game on, yeah. over here! Hey, can we can we jump into the game? Eh? Can we get yes, this going? Yes, we can. Over the pause just ended, on, so it's eh? time for the first game of what our second doing, series, eh? Empire vs. London Conspiracy, with only Pixel and Drasko. <laughs> hey. hey. Hello and welcome back to the casting desk. We're ready to kick off the second series of the day. London Conspiracy up once again, this time going up against Empire. The draft has been done. I'm here with Andy Draskel. What, what are we thinking? I mean, Elsie, they've struggled earlier. This draft switched it up a little bit. We're seeing the Baby Knight Wind Ranger come out again. Do you think they can win with this lineup against Empire? Oh, yeah, I think it's it's winnable. It, it's similar to the second game they were playing earlier in the first series. It's more of, like PyCat was saying, you just really need to make sure that you're emphasizing heavily on the lanes win them as hard as you can. However, I think a lot of the success that Linux Conspiracy had in that game for the first 15 to 20 minutes was because of the fact that they themselves had an Enchantress. And unfortunately, they don't have that like insane jungle tempo controller they did before, but this time they have the guy who was making all the space with them on a Crystal Maiden, who is most likely going to be the one just, you know, kind of sitting back trying to help zone the Tide Hunter, getting some jungle farm if you can, and relying more on Solon and the Earth Spirit to try to get things done during the early game stages. So again, it's possible, but I think it's a little bit more difficult for a Linux Conspiracy to meet a proper uh, a proper early game than it is for Empire, who can kind of just sit back, farm, have the Tidehunter go back, eat some stacks, use the Enchanters to control lanes, and I guess, if nothing else, we'll probably just have to see. I I'm in agreement with Pycat, though. I think if they don't do well in their lanes and for the first 15 to 20 minutes control the game, it's going to be real tough. I mean, I mean, what, what would you think about kind of the tight end to pick? And kind of going back onto what the panel's been talking about, having that kind of tank hero to frontline and, uh, and the fact that the Ursa on its own isn't enough. Do you, are you liking the fact that Ty's been picked up here by Empire? Obviously not a hero that we're seeing a lot of nowadays. I think it's more just a direct answer to heroes like Void. So when you pick Void, you're basically saying we have this really huge AoE lockdown and we can kind of force the fights based around that idea. And then you have other heroes like Wind Ranger or, you know, Crystal Maiden, Earth Spirit who can contribute inside of that to deal damage. But Tidehunter's AoE is bigger than Chronosphere. So you're basically put in a situation where you want to try to Chrono the Tide, yes. but he can sit extremely far away, go for counter initiation ravages, and he's also a natural mech carrier where Void is not. So if you have a team that doesn't build a mech, and Tidehunter makes mech arcanes, and he's obviously going to be getting some semblance of farm because Tide just always does, I think you are running into a problem on Lenna Conspiracy where you have a damage issue. I think that's going to be the biggest problem for them. I think Afterlife's going to get a lot out of his lane. And I think what's going to end up happening is the first few team fights that Linda Conspiracy take are just going to be way too difficult because the amount of damage that they actually have to deal to cut through Empire's heroes. And it's not necessarily having a tank as much as it is just having a, a more balanced lineup. And I think the Empire have that. No, I mean, I consider that as well. You said, obviously, about the fact that when you look into Chrono, you're, you're kind of having to be very aware of the... At the tide, but also the disruptor as well. I mean, if you're not catching yeah. him, you're going to get trapped at the end of the chrono. You might even get killed in the chrono, and you might even get glimpsed it's, out of the chrono. Yeah, it's quite difficult to get caught with a kinetic field in chrono, though. You move at like a thousand movement speed. True. As soon as you see that thing, you you're are just, just gone. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's more around, like, the five man of Empire is just better. And I think that was, that was summed up nicely uh, on the panel as well. So we'll have to see how the lanes go. And London Conspiracy, if nothing else, they do love their Wind Ranger. And you know what? I kind of understand why people hate on the hero, but at the same time, 
I still feel like Baby Knight played pretty well in the last game. You know, I, I don't feel like it was his play in particular that put them in a really bad position. I just think the hero might not be a tier one mid, but you can definitely win with it. Yeah, and it's gonna be interesting to see how he does, uh, of course, go up against Scandal in the in the mid lane here on his Invoker. And I mean, Scandal feels like a hero that he's he's been around for a long time, but we've never really seen him kind of uh, be on any kind of top teams recently. So it's, it's gonna be interesting to see how this squad does uh, with Empire's lineup. You know, Scandal uh, they've got they've got Ramses uh, on on the carry. Uh, actually, they don't. He's oh, sorry, um, Stellianer is standing in. Sorry, yes, yeah, not this game. Yes. But I'm yeah, probably with the standing as well. It's. Uh, it's not too bad. Again, Stendon's on a core position. See, Afterlife Trap quite low here. It should be fun with the Fairy Fire and the Anchor. Literally yeah, dealing no I mean, there's your tank. You know yeah. what I mean? Let them feel the and that's just one of those things where if you go on a hero like Tide and you don't kill him within the spin, you're just not yeah. going to kill him at all. Oh, we can see Maposhka here with a smoke at the same time. Ursa but, down. Oh, standing gone. That was a very aggressive dive. Let's see if my boss ship. Yeah, it looks like he's actually heading back to the top after that. Uh, Solon, I do not believe you're winning that trade. And, whoo. All right, so. <laughs> Kefka. I don't actually know what's happening right now because they had a, well, actually, he placed that ward 20 seconds ago, so maybe the ward didn't see him. But that was still very bizarre. Like, the air spirit rolls in. Just trying to force a little bit of pressure out onto the Disruptor, but don't forget that Thunder Strike is a really good level one nuke, and that Disruptor has a Null Talisman. Oh, this man's punching. Same time. What's that bottom lane they're trying to go in on to the Tide Hunter? All right, this rotation actually just does nothing. He's not going to get the rune. He TP'd bottom for a gank that's not going to work, and now he's going to try to see what he can get down middle lane, but they know. They even have I a ward, yeah, so this sees everything. I think Solon just literally went on tilt. Like, he died after rolling in on a hero that he can't kill. TP'd bottom, couldn't gank, and now he's just sitting on a ward. <laughs> like, this is not the early game that you want as an Earth Spirit. In terms of the, the lanes and the farm, we've got, what, the mid lane match of the Baby Knight is winning. 15-2 against the 10 for 1 of Invoker. Your safe lane is 16 for 3 against the 11 for 6, so a bit of an edge here. Uh, for the for the side of Empire, and that says even though they did of course lose the life of the Ursa once with the uh, with the first blood that went to Lena Conspiracy. Uh, getting the kill and everything is is fine, but if Empire come out even on their lanes, they're still feeling pretty happy about it. Again, it's all about Lena Conspiracy trying to make stuff happen with their their Earth Spirit rotations, you know, pressure the lanes a little bit. But I'm just not really seeing that happen. Like Void versus Ursa. Sure, you can use Time Walk and, and get rid of the damage that he deals to you under an Overpower, but you're never really going to contest an Ursa 1v1 on lane. And if the Earth Spirit's not finding anything, then the only thing that you're taking Solus in in the early game is that your Crystal Maiden might get some farm. But, so far, London Conspiracy, they are getting decent farm on their cores. Juggernaut's a little bit behind the Ursa, but Baby Knight is doing a really good job here with his double damage, just denying pretty much everything. Getting more ahead of Scandal. As we can see, he's just maintaining control of the runes as well. I mean, in terms of uh, the rotations that we're talking about as well from the Earth Spirit, I guess one of the pluses for, for Empire with this uh, Enchantress, that unlike the Earth Spirit, you can obviously just back off and start clearing some camps if you're not having a great time around the map. At the moment, talking about the two of them, just having a bit of a face-off. We'll roll away, and they're trying to look for Kefka. He's going to jump himself down. And they yet to really have the control to deal with that void. Look for the kill at mid lane. Well, maybe not. He's got to be careful. Boomer's still on cooldown here for eight seconds. He's going to fall low. He's going to juke out the sun strike, though. Nice, he's done it. He does have a regen rune. So he's going to be fine, but nearly, nearly losing his life. That's a scandal. This lane's really hard for Invoker, though. Basically, you want to try to use Cold Snap oh, to harass. This wraparound as well. Oh, baby Knight. Can he play himself out of this one? He's going to pop the wind run. But yeah, with the Cold Snap kicking in. Nice rotation from Eposhka and uh, shutting down Baby Knight, who was having a pretty good time and pretty much doubling the CS of that Invoker. So it's a good job that the uh, the Ench came in when she did. This is really the only lane that needs help. Yeah. To be honest, you don't have to help bottom because Afterlife can just jungle. Kefka is going to be dropping here in the top lane as well. So looks like he's had a really rough day. He's been dying nonstop in his off lane. It's just really tough for Lena Conspiracy to get anything going because even though Baby Knight's doing great. You know, you get one or two ganks on that lane, it doesn't matter how much you outplay in a 1v1. 
Well, they're trying to go in again. I mean, this this could be a good initiation if they can get Baby Knight in position. And with the stun and focus fire, looks like they will. Silent stepping it up there. We saw him have a few difficulties earlier trying to find a find a jump in, but that, that was done perfectly there for the setup for the Wind Ranger. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that you need to have Solon keep doing, though. Like, one kill is great. Need to make it more than one. Need to keep pressuring, you know, find maybe Mapashka on the Enchantress, apply some pressure there. He put a deep ward down, so he's going to see the entry rotations, which is good for Baby Knight. Oh, oh, Rune Steel. That's not your rune. The this dream. Come in handy. Nice. Oh, and he gets <laughs> the Invis. Nice. Tower is under attack. <laughs> Guys, nice. unfortunately, he's not level six. He could have set up something pretty nice with that. Well, I have the rune spot again. Looking to jump in. Nice stun onto two for Sol. The shackle shot to the power. Right, how did that latch, by the way? That was a huge... Uh, the distance on that was quite something. They'll look for a return kill. They will find it on the Earth Spirit. So both teams finding something, but... Baby Knight and his Wind Ranger, 2-1-0. And still, looking in terms of farm, he's top of the net worth. Things are going to plan for the mid lane. Need to keep it up. This is the game plan that the Conspiracy have adopted. They seem to really like this style where they put a lot of emphasis emphasis on their lanes, but they, they normally do quite well as an afterlife. Hi. See you later. All right. Jellipy there with the old Omni slash into Blade Fury. It's actually very uncommon that you see deaths like that because you basically have to eat a full Omni and a spin for Tidehunter to die in a 1v1 against a Jug. So most players have like the awareness of, okay, the only way I die is if I get omni and the only way that happens is if I don't have a creep wave. So he must have somehow not had a creep wave and then walked up into a Juggernaut and then just got omni which is a pretty not so great way to die. Let's see if, uh, if they can actually try and catch up Baby Knight again mid. I mean, Mopoxka hanging around, just taking some levels. If I did have to, it just backed off and entered the jungle to try and Give Maposhka that space. Now he's back. Maybe not. I'm sure he's going to be careful top lane. I mean, this Ursa, he keeps going in. Giving it some. And this time, maybe punished for his solemn rolling forward. Gets the slow off. And now, let's see if Baby Knight... Oh, that! These are some lovely shackles. Really nicely done there by the Wind Ranger. Without that, they don't get that kill. Baby Knight, great stuff. It's the same kind of Wind Ranger that does Secret Play, actually. They don't necessarily, like, you can transition it into a core, like, position one type hero, but they just play aggressive with it. They they land shackles, you land shackles, you get kills. Oh. Alright, see him. See a play around this one after life. He has got the ult available. He probably doesn't want to blow it for just to see him. He's got a haste for himself, a bit of harassment. And literally zero damage taken. Yeah. Just walks it off. Level three Kraken. What an ability. How sad is it that level three Kraken is actually better than Vanguard? Good spell. It's good Pretty good, spell. yeah. Pretty good. Having it eight minutes in. I mean, yeah. The the Omni, is, uh, sorry, the Jog, and especially the CM, it's going to be like that. Right click, so um, bottom lane. They'll set this up with a Chrono. Trying to look for King Armor with the Blade Fury, they'll find it. That was now, really nice. Can they get themselves a second one? Stun on point for Solon. Trying to block him off. He's going to try and dive this one. Jellipy hanging around, but now the turn around and he's got the Omni. He comes through the Enrage, just come out of the end of it, and now... Stallion is trying to find something. They've forgotten about the edge. Edge has walked into this one, looking for Jellipy. Uh, oh, he hit what? the creep! Oh, okay. If he didn't get that, I was going to say, blooming heck. He's trying to look for the... Oh! Oh! Oh, oh that was... Oh! The stuff of dreams there for Edge. Mid lane as well, Empire. That's a disaster. I get themselves a third one. Oh, that impetus. That was so greedy, like... They knew the Ursa had enraged. Why would they dive that hard? Why would he use Omni? That was like such an obvious bait. They nearly had him, Andy. Uh, they actually didn't nearly have him. They didn't. No. He was at full he HP. He didn't use his ulti because he got sphered inside with the Disruptor. They use everything on the Disruptor and then they continue to chase. That was just not the great decision making there from Linux Conspiracy. I mean, obviously, we, we didn't see what happened mid until the very end, but. Can only assume that Disruptor is really good against Wind Ranger. Now that's how of course Kefka and we going for this Vlad's build. None of this uh none of the Vanguard Radiance action, unfortunately. This game. He's keeping it cool, keeping it usual. Kefka, he's been eyed up. I mean King Art does have a static storm. They could very well get this kill if the control is there, bang on, and it is indeed. Brings him straight in. He's trapped and he's taken down. Nice clean play there from King Art on the Disruptor. So we were talking about 
you know, what London Conspiracy needs to do in order to win the game. And one of the biggest things that not only the panel, but I also said was, you need to win your lanes. You absolutely need to win your lanes. And right now, the Wind Ranger is still farmed. Juggernaut's still farmed in terms of overall CS, but we haven't really even seen a Tide Ravage yet. And Empire are ahead on kills. Their Invoker's got Midas. He's level 9, pretty much the same experience of Baby Knight. So even though he was doing well against Scandal, it, it's kind of been, you know, oh, counteracted. No. Oh, Kafka as well. He just got back to base. That's a tilt right there, for sure. It just doesn't really seem to be his day, actually. He's been struggling in pretty much every single game we've seen so far. Now we'll see Empire finding a bit of time to get the pressure on, on the top lane. Afterlife as well in the spawn lane. He's, he's finding a lot of XP. He's level 8 on his tide. Radiant structure. We'll see uh, at what point he's able to turn to another lane, bottom or top lane, sorry, trying to roll forward, but they're already out of there. They really should try to get their Earth Spirit level 6. It's really a problem when Empire supports, like, Disruptor is almost level 7, Ench is level 8, your Earth Spirit is not level 6 yet, like, Solon oh. needs Magnetize for sure. And here's your Roche attempt. Now, the question is, do they get away with this one? Oh god, yeah, they have yeah. Ravage and Static Storm. There is no way Lunic Conspiracy can fight this. Yeah, but Scandal's one of his four spirits. They know what's going on. Oh, their afterlife's actually not there. Okay, so he needs to be there for sure. <laughs> like, fighting this is so difficult. The power shot spam's doing a decent amount of work, though. If Solon was six, I'd say they might try this, but it's a little bit too risky and without now it. Oh! Chunk. Have we got Sunstrike? Yes, we have. Oh, uh, it's he off guessed point. the wrong way. He, a point. he actually guessed as if Solon was going to juke. And then Solon's just like, nah, I'm not going to juke. <laughs> the no juke juke is the best juke, Indeed, the double by juke. the way. That's like the Chris Angel, the mind freak. Well, is that baby knight this game? Uh, I mean, is he is he going for the Ags first, or do you think this is the casual point boost and then the Maelstrom and then the Ags? Or for some reason he's decided he needs to get the Ags, because last game was someone picked up the Maelstrom first. I think Maelstrom is really good. Yeah. Um, just because it makes your focus fire a bit more dangerous and also lets you wave clear more. Obviously, you still have power shots, so even if you go for the straight Aghanims, you're just more liberal with your power shot spam than you are like auto attacking ways down. But I think either build is fine, really. He might actually need the cooldown on his ulti, though. Like being able to use it more reliably in fights like more than one time because the rest of his team kind of does lack in the damage department. Still waiting for Solon to hit that six. Finally prioritize him getting some EXP mid now, which would be nice, but this Tide's gonna have like mech or pipe done Tide's guns getting soon. a lot. He is getting a lot of space after. That's what I was saying. It's like yeah. they don't have anything to punish the Tide. Even though he made a misplay and died once, we're gonna... Okay, comes back in. Oh, Kefka. One more hit should do it, but oh, whoo, whoo, Chrono! Nice. On to two. Kefka comes back in. He says, we got you, boys. Okay, this is five Mandota right here. And can they get this man for a second time? Yeah, with the silence of the Shackle, they sure can. That's what they needed. We call Double that space. Baby and Kefka not dying. Great stuff. Great stuff indeed. The receptor combo was just a little bit sloppy. If that had been executed properly, I think they would have just gotten away with that. No, no biggie. Radiance middle tower. Oh, uh, Mech is done now in Afterlife. They got the tier 1, so they're just going to go for a, an overall trade. Radiance structure. Looks like we'll see what Baby Knight's going to choose item-wise. He's kind of pulling a lot of gold, so I imagine he's just deciding if he wants the Maelstrom. I think with this much money, he might oh, just yeah. buy it. Well, you think he's just the straight-up Maelstrom? I mean, is there any advantage in going for for an early BKP, or are you just not doing enough elsewhere? Oh, no, you, you, you do no you damage. Yeah. You would do no damage if you bought BKB. I think the main reason Maelstrom okay. is okay... Oh. Can you play his way out of this one? He's going to time warp. But well, they've got the vision here with the field, and no, Kefka's gone. A little bit, a little bit too far out, and Empire straight away punish it. 30 seconds without your void. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, Baby Knight's gonna have to make a decision soon if he wants to finish that Radiance item. Oh, he does go Ags, okay. Attack. Now, this is okay against pretty much everyone but Tide. Tide Hunter will take no damage, and he's got his mech on the way. So, the only reason I thought that Maelstrom would be nice outside yeah. of the fact that you can farm with it is the lightning actually kind of makes it so you can kill Tidehunter in a sphere, whereas just Aghanims means that killing him is still very difficult. So, you chrono him, he's blocking, you know, 48 damage every single focus fire attack without any Maelstrom procs. You're pretty much hitting it for nothing, right? 
So, we will see. I mean, I imagine he go. He gets himself a master next, or yeah, either that or blink. Build. Yep. Either that or blink. There's not really much to anticipate blink daggers. Like the last game we saw him play Wind Ranger, he was forced into BKB because he was up against a Zeus. And obviously, blink against Zeus is just considered worse because of uh, static field and random Zeus ultis that can cancel your initiation. But in this game, I can see blink being fairly useful. It, but the the problem with going blink is that you're actually just all in on fighting at that point. Because if you buy a blink and you don't land like two hero shackles, the blink dagger just isn't useful. Make sure you can farm with it or whatever, but a maelstrom would be much better for farming. Enjoy the pre top. Just be a little bit careful as Empire are closing in on this lane. They're coming around, looking for a wrap ramp. Poshka, and he's going to get the slow. Just the team a little bit too far away, and he's going to go for the quick TP out. And he will be alright, nothing to go through that. I mean, a Juggernaut's still getting a good amount of farm. Stellianer on the Ursa has been kind of, you know, going to team fights, trying to force objectives and whatnot, and it's kind of showing by the fact that up until this point, Empire have only lost one tower. I think, yeah, in terms of just the net worth difference, it's just the all-round Empire in a better place. You've got that difference between your offlaners and your difference between your Romans as well. As well, talking about one of them Solon on the Earth Spirit, a couple of hits and he's gone. And he's just he's fallen behind compared to this Ench. He's about double the net worth on the Enchantress, which I guess can be expected to a certain extent, but a safe to say the Esprit's struggling to find as many kind of pickoffs as he would have wanted to in the landing stage. Now, Jellopy, you can you can run, but you certainly can't hide here from the bear. Shackle will buy him some time though. And so running will be successful. He's thinking hanging around, turning around. He has got the Omni Slash if anyone comes up. But Good stuff indeed that uh, Baby Knight was there to hold back the big old bear. It really feels like this is a... Oh, okay. Shaq going to be off here. Okay, that's fear. Not sure about that one. Okay. Yeah, because Baby Knight got glimpsed back, so damage is kind of lacking. They indeed have this mech ready on Afterlife, and, well, Omni Slash onto the Disruptor will make short work of it. So they get himself one kill, stun. It's Miposhka, Jellipy. Uh, he, he thinks about it, but he touches... Uh, it was just nothing, the untouchable, just too much for the jug to try and outright click. Shackle onto Afterlife, but this is the man that you said indeed. You're not really going to be able to focus fire this guy down. So they're going to have to let him walk. And it's just the Disruptor going down, but I did have to commit the Omni Slash for that. And the Cronus. That was a really awkward fight. No one really wanted to commit. Empire didn't have their Ravage available. Actually, has Afterlife used Ravage at all this game? I don't think we've seen one. I, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he hasn't used it once. So, that being said, we haven't even really seen Empire's final form, if you will. We haven't had everything kind of synergized together nicely to have some kind of team fight happen. Not mid lane. Looking onto Scandal. Scandal turns Ragus the Tornado onto the Earth River. But still, the stun flies through and nice play. They will find that Invoker kill. It's going to be Scandal gone for a good 50 seconds. At the same time, Empire. Got a couple of them down on the bottom. The net worth difference it isn't that too great. It's only around 3k. XP is about one. So it's still indeed a very, very close game. It's just that the money is more invested for the side of LC on their two cores, whereas for Empire, it's a little bit more uh, evenly spread around the board. Reminds me of like old school European slash NA Dota versus Chinese Dota, where the Chinese players were kind of the ones who always prioritize their supports getting more. And then as time went on, like the European scene and North American scene started adapting to that. Whereas we always played like, you know, four protect ones and all that other stuff, dual cores or whatever. But nowadays everyone kind of realizes the importance of the supports and what they can actually do. Okay, so the Tide Blink, I really like. I'm glad he didn't go for Greaves because one of the most painfully obvious things about this game for Empire is their lack of catch. They pretty much only have Disruptor for it. And Disruptor is good, but the way that Disruptor catches somebody is not by starting a team fight, it's by finding somebody who is running away from a push or, you know, somebody overextends a little bit and then Disruptor becomes really strong. So, that in mind, they're just going to smoke behind it. Roshan timer will be known very soon. Well, Jellipy would be a nice catch if they can. Have... Whoa, Ravel! Nice. There's your Ravage. Oh, man, that Juggernaut just, just like that was gone. He did not have a chance. Yeah, unfortunate for Empire, the Roshan spawns. Oh, and they get the glimpse onto the CM with that lovely lane ward. He's ghost it up. He'll buy him some time. Not a lot. That One should, more punch. Um, that should get dewarded, though, after that. Yeah. Like, you don't get glimpsed yeah, from he, that. He, even just... la he laid down the sentry as he died. Yeah. It's like, 
Make this my final job. Actually, I think... Does that sentry see? Oh, it's just out of range. Is it out of range? No, no, no. There, there's two of them. One of them is and one of them isn't. So that the ward actually faded, I think, or they killed it right away, and then that sentry doesn't see ah, the other yeah, ward. So the cliff, yeah. Yeah. But that was one of the biggest problems that Empire were kind of struggling with, but... At the same time, it didn't much matter because London Conspiracy couldn't force a full 5-on-5 five five engagement. It's a super common theme for them throughout all their drafts. Their 5-man is almost always worse, and they favor lane dominance more than almost anything. Oh, yeah. And it's not even like their lineup is greedy, to be honest. Like, sure, CM might be construed as a little bit greedy, but Juggernaut is a safe laner who can fight. Earth Spirit can fight. Wind Ranger can fight. Void can fight. All of these heroes have some kind of capability of doing something during the mid-game, they just don't have the damage. That's really the biggest issue. I mean, you got Void, he's picked up a, a Mask of Madness, just so they've got something else, you know, that has a chance of getting a few bashes out, a bit of damage. Yeah. I mean, the Mask of Madness is okay. I still would prefer a Vlad's, to be fair. This is the kind of item where I think you buy a Mask of Madness when you feel like you're going to get a solo kill. Yes. You know, you, you, or you want to keep farming and maybe go for some ultra late game builds. Oh, here we have a bit of action, and Baby Knight jumps in. We'll find the focus for Anzus to Afterlife, trying to waltz into position. There's the ult from Biver coming out. He's going to take a sun strike to the face and one impetus. Another would have done it, but he can't quite get it off now. The Omni Slash coming through onto Meposhka, bringing him alive. He did get the heal off. Can he get himself out of this one? The mech keeping him alive. Meposhka will be fine. Oh, oh, no, he won't. Right in the face. Oh, I said it too soon. Power shot from Baby Knight. That was a really nice engagement, knowing that Ravage was still down. Not really... There's not a whole lot of control on the side of Empire, if you think about it, outside of that one Ravage. So going back to the draft and solidifying it with that Afterlife Tide, it's a really good way of just ensuring that not only can you get Roshan very early, because Afterlife had a great laning phase, got six early, got his Arcanes, you can just put that Tide there as a barrier and say, okay, if you want to fight us, you're going to have to get Ravaged. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, keeping a PG-13, but you're pretty much walking into a, to a Tide Hunter if you want to contest it, which is a very dangerous thing to do, so... Looks like we're going to have somebody reconnect really quick. Uh, still feel like London Conspiracy can win this game. They're they're doing a really good job of taking the small skirmish fights where it favors them. And Baby Knight's been playing great, oh, like, yes. all day, yeah, I, I think. He, I think it was the other day where he had a few performances that weren't great. He, I think yeah, it was like a bit three rough. three times in the mid lane in both of the games of the series. But this series, he seems to be kind of the shining star for the team. Yeah. It's kind of like watching a Weeha Wind Ranger, where you just always see the shackles land. It just seems like he can't really miss them, which is great. But the second those shackles stop hitting, London yep. Conspiracy is going to have big issues. But I, see. I suppose in some ways, because the Juggernaut went for Battle Fury, they have more late game orientation just due to that. And there is obviously some synergy with the Battle Fury inside of Chronosphere if you can actually get an Omni target. But yes, a lot of the, yeah. yeah, a lot of the time it's a little bit tough. You know, if they're not on the outside of the sphere, it can be a little bit iffy if you're going to get uh, close enough. So it looks like someone's having a, a bit of a potty break. Because why not? But. Um, yeah, it's, it's a close game. Um, I'm glad to see the watching games where anyone can win at like this stage, it really feels more fun to me, right? Because if you're just watching a stomp, even if it's two tier one teams, if I know it like 10 minutes in the game is over, yeah. I just kind of lose interest. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. This one is earlier. We saw a couple of games. They're a little bit more. Well, there was a point where they just were like, all right, there's no coming back. But this one. Yeah, it's, it's really down to who can who can find the jump ins and, and indeed, as you said, none of them the conspiracy, even though they may not have done as well as they wanted to in the lanes, they have got that arguably later later game potential with the way that they're building. And you know, if they can hit these big ults, if they can get these big chronospheres, there's gonna be every chance for them to, to just catch Empire off guard but at the same time. Afterlife with the uh, with the blink pickup as you were saying earlier, the fact that he gets it before the greaves is nice because they themselves they need to find the jump ins. They need to be initiating these fights. Meanwhile, Rosha uh, is going to take it. LC, not a chance of cancelling that one, though. No players around in the near, nearby. But Jellipede farming continues to pick up. 2.8k on top of the Yasha, on top of the, on top of the Blade, uh, sorry, the Battle Fury. But Ursa uh, does have his Ags now. And this is uh, obviously going to make uh, the kind of the Jug versus Ursa situation a whole lot harder. Yeah, Jug is a really bad matchup for Ursa. Like, strictly 1v1. There's never really a stage in the game where you're going to feel super confident. Because if you spin, you get mauled by overpower. And if you ult, he pops in rage. And then it's like, well, I don't know damage. Doesn't look like they want to fully commit to this. Rightfully so. Multiple TP reactions coming in top lane. So it's going to be like four heroes here. My Empire will be very happy to fight on this top lane. 
It feels a bit strange though, right? Like, even though London Conspiracy are playing very well, every single time there's a small opportunity for a five-man engagement, London Conspiracy just run. They're like, nah, we don't really want to do this. Doesn't really seem like us. And that's kind of just the strength of what Empire have drafted. Again, like Disruptor, obviously, being uh, one of the bigger team fight oriented heroes in uh, conjunction with the Tide. And if you land that combo together, like Ravage and Oh, just, he's oh, found him. Oh, oh. He knows he's there. Oh, he's over Blink though. No, Void. I think he's just outplayed them, outgamed them. Oh, that oh. definitely was. Oh, the cold snap. <laughs> Nearly TPing out there successfully. I think he could have actually used. Wait, wait, was it up in time? Must have barely been off cooldown or something. Not sure if his time walk was back up or not. That was a close one. Without the threat of a, a Chronos for 30 seconds. Empire. Oh, Looks to take the tier two. You got a man to now turn on the jug. We'll see how much he can do in terms of offering to the fight. He's going to use it to push at this moment. I mean, the lane. Looking for the tier two for tier two trade if he can get it. Yeah, I think he'll just keep pushing until. I don't know if Empire are actually back here. Okay, the Void's up in five. Maybe they do back. Uh, sir? He, he's looking for someone. angry. Maybe Knight. Okay, gets the Shackle on to Disrupt and we'll take him down. And with that, I think Empire are going to think twice about hanging around. They're blinking away. LC are trying to chase this one down. Ursa still looking to fight. Will pop the Amrage. Look for Solar, but the Shackle again. Trapping him. The Chrono on to Afterlife on the back lines here. He's still got the Ursa biting away at Baby Knight, but Baby Knight will escape. Round two, Aegis is up. Afterlife comes in with a huge Ravage onto two. But it looks like there's just no follow-up. The Shackles onto the Tide Hunter. It's a huge mess from Empire by the looks of it. You've still got Stalliana on this Ursa doing enough to clean it up. But the focus fire from Baby Knight, bringing Maposhka low. Empire, up on the Grease, now looking back towards Jellipy. This Ursa seems to be the big issue. He's still up there, full health now. Kefka jumping forward, Jellipy. Oh, crits down the Enchantress, now with the Bash. Onto the Ursa, trying to turn, trying to go against this Juggernaut. We're seeing the strength of this Ursa, he can do that. One more touch will do it. But Jellipy just a little bit too fast, he's getting kited. And Ursa, he's getting brought down. Baby Knight with a Wicked Sick finish off. God, that and Ursa just got kited so hard. Hey, he really insane. did. It did cost that they brought back on the uh, Void, but worth it every time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Baby Knight's just been playing so well. He kills the Disruptor before the fight even kicks off. When that happens, like, that was a fresh 10-second BKB. Kickoff. He kills him. There's no Static Storm, no Kinetic Field, no Glimpse, no way to really help the Ursa stay on target. As soon as that hero is dead, London Conspiracy have a ton of breathing room inside of the team fight because then the only disable is Ravage. And unfortunately, Afterlife had to Ravage in a way that all the Invoker spells pretty much had already been used, and at that point, Scandal pretty much has to run. So there's no real follow-up like you were mentioning during the team fight itself and no damage output during the Ravage means that the team fight potential that you now had is, is just gone. And then the rest of the team can just run circles around the Ursa. There's a very sloppy fight coming out there from Empire. I mean, they kind of had all the spells, but just nothing really working together perfectly for them. It was just all, as you said, kind of Dyer's the Ravage would come out, but there's nothing to follow it. Ursa was being kited. There's nothing to control LC. And well, here we have it. Shackle comes through, but the Enrage is there to remove it. Baby Knight is going to look for the quick TP off, and, and he is going to make it. Ah, uh, Solon. Yep. Not out of there. So they do get an Earth Spirit kill. At least Empire. They do hold the tier two. But still, uh, as you keep saying, Baby Knight's performance on this win range, and it's given the space and time for Jellipy to now kind of cement himself comfortably at the top of the net worth board as well with 15 and a half K. And now they, he's there. Yeah, this, these this two is... cores are just, uh, they, they, it feels like they're too much for Empire. It's a performance thing, though. Like these heroes, yeah. maybe not Juggernaut so much, but Wind Ranger is the type of hero where if you have a good player on it, it can look like a tier one hero. But if you just stop landing those shackles for even a second, the game can turn on you very quickly. And we just haven't seen that. Like, Baby Knight's been so consistent about his initiations and all the heroes that he's finding out, making sure that he's either landing, you know, a one or a two hero shackle, kill them during the duration of it, and then you take the 4v5 team fight. That's the ideal engagement outside of, I guess, hitting a really big chrono and then having a shackle to follow it up or an Omni Slash or Magnetize or what have you. So, like, London Conspiracy are getting to a stage where this Wind Ranger before didn't really deal a ton of damage but now has Blink, BKB, Aghanim's crit 
And when that Daedalus is done, not even Tidehunter is safe from that damage. Like, you will die very quickly. Interesting choice there. I mean, I think he's had enough in terms of kiting and ghost scepters. The Diffuser Blade now and the Ursa. Yeah. Now, I mean, in these situations where we have these messy fights, you should be able to get these. You're going to get the kills, really. The only person you still can't kill is the Wind Ranger, I suppose. If you catch the Void after a time walk, maybe yeah. you can kill him. Uh, but the Wind Ranger, you will need MKB, 100%. And he might be forced into that item progression, which honestly will make him very squishy. Like, he has Mask of Madness, Aghanims, and then he won't have BKB because he'll need to buy MKB unless he's relying on the rest of Empire to kill Baby Knight. But the problem is, with the BKB on Baby Knight, no one can kill him. Uh, going for the Omni on Afterlife, uh, it's not quite enough. Yeah, that hero tanky. Worth the shot. Top lane, Chrono. We'll catch out Scandal here. Scandal. Yeah, there's no help around the corner with the Focus Fire. Uh, it's gonna be an easy pick off. I mean, yeah, this Baby Knight Wind Ranger, this... At this point, I think it's, it's safe to say that it is certainly learned a conspiracy in the lead with the with how far both Wind Ranger and Jug have got ahead. They just haven't had the perfect team fight yet. Like, Empire keep taking these fights where they're starting off 4v5 or their heroes are out of position. And London Conspiracy are just abusing them for it. Well, they want to go now. London Conspiracy, they've found the momentum. They're looking to fight mid. Jellope. Oh, Ravage onto three. And Jellope's gone. Alrighty now. Focus fire onto the Ursa. That will redeem it. Baby Knight finds himself the Ursa kill. No idea that they lost the jug there, but Ravage was committed. And at the end of the day, it is LC finding themselves the Ursa kill in return. Mid lane. Jumping forward, but at the same time, Baby Knight's ready, Shackle. To Afterlife, it will walk it off with the Kraken Shell, but the Power Shell comes through. They'll finish off the Disruptor. Meposhka being caught out by three heroes, just going ham on him. He's trying to walk this one off. Baby Knight's coming forward as well. If the Shackle comes out, won't latch, but it doesn't matter by the looks of it. The Focus Fire is more than enough. And Empire, they are they're just getting ripped to shreds at this point. They're all over the place. I, I think they would have even killed the Tide if... Before that team fight, the Wind Ranger actually spent some of their money. So Baby Knight just sitting on like 3,600 gold. Has enough to finish the completed Daedalus if he wants. He might uh, opt to save for buyback. Depends though. I suppose right now the next big objective is going to be Roshan. Buyback doesn't really matter so much for that because if you fight Roshan and you lose and then you have buyback, you're basically just... The enemy team will force it out, right? Which kind of makes it not so great. But if you just buy the item to win the team fight and you already know that there's no MKBs, then you're basically saying we can just win the fight itself. And it seems like Lennox Conspiracy, that's the way they like to play. So, completed Daedalus here. Now for the Wind Ranger. And Empire, they're they're kind of running out of options, to be honest with you. Like, this Ursa's item progression is kind of slowing down a bit. The Invoker, I, I haven't really felt Scandal's impact so much this game. There just doesn't really seem to be a whole lot of synergy in, in how hey, they Lang. fight. He's jumping in. Jellope is looking is to manly. leave this. He's, uh, he's fine. He's got Baby Knight backing him up but the Shackle. You're taken off by the M-Rage and Baby Knight. Oh, okay, Kafka with the Chrono. That's going to allow Baby Knight to really just rip through the Earth. So that's two dead double kill here for your Wind Ranger. And they're looking to fight for more. Afterlife dropping low, dropping permanently dead on the Tide So Scandal caught out as well. They've got the detection. So triple kill for Baby Knight. Miposhka in trouble as well. The last one standing for him by looking for the TP out. But Baby Knight has no mercy. Ultra kill for the man as he finishes it off with a power shot. And this game is looking nearly as good as over for Empire as London Conspiracy. They are a little bit of a warm-up early against VP, and now in this series against Empire, they're proving that they're, they are no pushovers. A very impressive comeback performance after losing a series 2-0. Uh, Not super decisive oh, in the second game. Oh, nice buyback. All right, that's a sad time for a Bambi. But I, you know, some games you look at and you say on paper, it's like, okay, how do we lose? Maybe it was our draft. Maybe we made a couple of the key mistakes at team fights. I really feel like Empire lost to Baby Knight. I actually feel like that's what this game was. Yeah. I mean, 17 2 3. Uh, you know, you've got to put a lot on Baby Knight's performance. You really have. He had the right item progression at the right time in the game every single time. So he gets a blink immediately turns it into kills. He has BKB for important team fights. He lands a shackle when Empire pushing top for what you could argue would have normally been a Rack's capable push. Kills a disruptor right away, prevents them from going high ground. Like everything about this game 
that has gone well for Linux Conspiracy, it seems like Baby Knight's been behind it, which is obviously, you know, the rest of Linux Conspiracy did a really good job as well, but in terms of even what the Juggernaut's done, like, even though Jellipee is massively farmed, like, the guy's huge. I didn't really feel the Juggernaut's impact so much, you know what I mean? It just really feels like every fight is a shackle lands, you win the fight. I think yeah, I think overall it's just the fact that that Baby Knight's play has been the most uh, consistent this game. I mean, you know, as you it's said, just a not standout. taking away from the others. There's been good Chronospheres. Yeah. There's been big catch outs by, by the the Earthspirits of Solon, but but overall there's there's also been a lot of misses from them. But it seems like Baby Knight this game, there's, there's, he's not missed anything. Everything's right. been on point. I also kind of feel like Scandal has had an off game. I didn't really feel like his invoker was quite up to par on what I normally see. Like, even during that last fight, he's throwing out meteors while people are still on the air with Tornado, like, just dealing zero damage, basically. I don't even think I've seen him use Ice Wall a single time, and that spell is, like, super good. I don't know, it just feels like one of those games where maybe they... No, they just... they just played, didn't they? Uh, Empire did just play against Kaipi. Against Kaipi, right. And they did lose. Yeah, it was 2-1, right? Yeah. So it's not a warm-up game oh, at all. Oh, and that smoke. That's, yeah, that's... Oh! oh okay, Baby Knight's trying to go in, but the Ravage will come out. Now the Static Storm, oh! The caught out three Empire. They're trying to strike back. The Chrono will come out, but they've already managed to find two kills on the side of LC. Can they resume this one? Omni Sash coming through. On him and Poshka, on to Scandal. But Solon's falling low. They do get the kill off the Invoker, but it's a triple kill for your Ursa. It's going to be double kill as well. They've managed to find a few, but now the buybacks from Ursa. They're looking to continue to fight this, but they've lost Disrupt on the side. Empire, they do try and hit back there, but still, they don't come out on top. It's a close one. The money and XP will show it, but the fact that it's even, they need more than an even trade and more than an even fight to come back into this one, Empire. There's no buyback available for Scandal on his Invoker. And LC, they've still got their cause alive. They've still got the big boys up. And now you buy back on Disruptor. They've got to do something big here. Man, that fight could have been so much better for LC. Like, of course, Caster's Curse. We talk about Baby Knight, how well he's doing. He doesn't pop his BKB when he hits Shackle yeah. and then gets Ravaged. Even though as soon as you land that Shackle, even if you don't think the Tide is there, you still pop that BKB just so you guarantee that you deal damage in that Shackle. But still, a fight I think that they'll be all right with. They got two Cicerax down so far. Pressuring yeah. lanes pretty heavily. Still got the Cheese available on the Wind Ranger as well on top of that. I mean, it could be, of course, the start of something good for Empire, right? but, but at the same time, they need another fight like that. They need, you know, numerous more fights like that one to bring it back in. I just think that maybe London Conspiracy, their answer to Dire Ursa is just Wind Ranger every time. You know, because it seems like one of the only heroes that at every stage in the game, you're going to have a way of dealing with the Ursa. Because Ursa doesn't naturally want to build into MKB if the enemy team is also buying Ghost Scepters. Because look at his inventory, right? Like, what does he get rid of for MKB now? He has to pretty much buy bots, and then he also wants BKB. Oh, okay. That's a free man chrono here. Do they have to back up to go off the back of it? And they do. Omni Slash coming on to Afterlife. It's going to jump across the Disruptor. They'll find themselves too. Afterlife. He's going to be gone as well here by the looks of it. Scandal's jumping in with the BKB, trying to make something happen, but... As fast as his fingers may be, he can't deal with the full, full team of Elsie coming in, and it's and and GG is called. 33 to 21. Empire had hopes at the start, but Elsie, as we talked about, it just really brought it back. And baby, baby night, highest net worth uh, for any win range of 35 minutes, and the second most kills on the hero this patch at game. That was a great performance on the win range and. And it's a win ranger. Yeah, as you said, you've got to be a skilled player to pull something off like that. 19 for 3 for 6. I mean, it just begs the question. We know that he loves to play it. As if you're Empire, do you even just take it away from him in the next game? Mm, it's hard to say. Because, again, it's it's one of those heroes where if you don't have a standout performance, the hero feels very lackluster. It's like picking a Marana. You can see a Marana hit, like, every single arrow, and everyone's like, oh, man, this, this hero's, this, like, yeah. so good. And then you see another Marana, and you miss all your arrows, and then your team reports you. And then you're like, all right, well, we lost. So I think this game is a very small sample size. Obviously, yes. he played amazing. There's yeah. no taking it, anything away from him. You know, yeah, yeah, of course. So I, I think that was just their how they like to deal with Ursa. Just pick the Wind Ranger, a core who can you know land the shackle. Even if he pops in rage, you always have Wind Run to fall back on. Mm -hmm. It just seems like a really solid answer for it. So uh, I don't think Empire will get Dire two games in a row because I believe that. If they have the choice next game, on a conspiracy will probably pick Dire because they did it against VP as they well. They did, yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, I think I think you're right. And I think it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, the second game, Empire. I think they draft. Do you think there was issues with the draft that game? Or did they no, need to, I, I actually just, think just play. I think really? it was just play. Just I think Empire's play. draft yeah. had a lot of ways of winning. The end still had a decent amount of farm at the end of the game. It's yeah. just that Empire could never really find the full five versus five, you know, wombo combo that they're really looking for. And if you don't land a good Ravage and Disruptor is not there to help the Ursa stick on target, your Ursa literally just runs around and can't do anything. Like it's it's so hard for him. Absolutely, and I think, yeah, as you said, the uh, the Ursa pick as well, something that we see a lot of CIS teams do when they're confident. I think when you're going up against LC, if you're Empire, you, you're maybe not feeling as confident going into game two. You, you've got to look somewhere else, so I'd be surprised if they do run with the Ursa yet again. But game two, ladies and gentlemen, will be right around the corner, so don't go anywhere as we'll see some more action. We're going to cut to a short outbreak, then back to the panel, then back to us. We'll see you shortly. <laughs> 